Okay, uh, we're going to talk about a couple more things in this chapter. It'll take a little while to get through them. Uh, first, we're going to see how do you actually measure and plot the speed of operations in Python. And we're going to, we're going to use a new module called the Time It module. And then we're also going to look at the performance of different operations in Python uh, for both list and dictionaries. And there's some tables of this in the book. And you'll probably just have to memorize them or refer to them when they arise on uh, future assignments and tests. So I'm going to go through the Time It module. The Time It module uh, allows you to time things precisely. And one of the things it has the advantage of, of uh, the way we did time before is it works uh, consistently across different platforms. Whether you're in Unix, on a Mac, or on Windows, it gives you the same time. Uh, it also has some nice functionality to it. So uh, first you import time it. So that makes the module available under the word time it. So, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so there's a special class called timer, and you have to create an object of that type. So you say time it dot timer. That's invoking the constructor for the object. And it expects two strings. Each string should be statements in Python. And you can have more than one statement. And if you do, you should put them semicolons between them. And it will execute those statements. And what the statements do is the first statement is what do you want to time? And the second statement is any setup that you want to do for that timing. Uh, so if you leave off the second statement, it just times whatever the first statement is. Now, the, this actually doesn't time it. It just sets up an object that can time those that got set up. What do you want to time and how do you set up an environment before you run the time? Uh, so here's an example of actually timing something. You say the name of this object, which we created T1, and you say time it, and then you tell it how many times do you want to run this action here. And this is kind of a dumb action. We're actually timing how long does it take to print the word action. Uh, but this printing out will also kind of show you how it works. So here that we set a number equal to 10. This is a, 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 a oper this is a parameter where you use reference by name. And so n is set to 5. So what it's going to do, it's going to do this action five times and measure the time before it does the five t things. And then after it does the five things, gets the difference in time. So it does all that for you. So it comes back in seconds. So that's how uh, what it was the number of seconds to do those five prints up here. And I just print it out. So I format it uh, how many times it took and how many seconds. OK, and then I print a separator. And we're going to look at another method. And this is the preferred method for, for doing timings. And so with this method, it's, you use the same object, which has what you're going to time and what the setup is. And uh, what happens is you say repeat. And this 2 here is equivalent to the number. It's how many uh, times you want to, in this case, print the word action. So it, it would do it twice. And it would time that. How long, how long does it take to do it twice? And then this number is how many times to do that timing. So this returns a list of 10 times that uh, is the timing it took to do this action twice. And what it does is every time it does that action twice, it does the setup. And then it does the two actions. And it times that. And it gets one of the things in the list. Then it does the setup. Then it does the two actions. And then it's going to get the next thing in the list. And so when I'm all done, I'm going to print all those times. So let's look at this. We're going to look at two things. Uh, one is, when does it actually print setup and action? So let's look at this one first. It's actually going to do everything. We'll just look at the, the output for that one first. So this is the first one we run. And remember, we set up a, the object to time things, which does action and setup. The, it, for setup, it just prints the word setup. So that'll tell you when it would actually call that when we look at our printout. And when it actually measures the action, it prints the word action so we can see where that happens as well. So then when you actually call T1 time it for five times, you'll see what it does is it prints setup once, and then it does the action five times. And it's actually going to measure the time 
between the first uh, before the first action and after the last action finishes and that's the time it reports but you can see it only does set up once and that's not part of the timing so that's how time it works it basically uh, does one setup and then it does a certain number of the same action over and over again and the reason it's doing that is because every time you do the action if you average the times by doing multiple of them uh, you get the number of seconds to do five actions and then divide by five that'll give you the number of seconds for just one action but it will give you an average considering the variation you have on a processor so now we're going to look at this. this this is going to repeat doing two times ten times so let's look at this so what it does it does the setup and then it times two times and then does the setup again and times two times. Now this is nice because your setup could be setting up something that the actions destroy in some way. So a, it does a new setup before it times it again. Uh, so it's, you might have a database that you initially start with and you do a couple of database actions and so the actions might actually modify the data so you want to do a new setup before you time it again. So that's what that's useful for. But when you're all done it actually has a list of 10 timings and so it reports them out here and it does some formatting. And you can see how the timings vary even though we're doing the same thing. Uh, in fact the most useful timing in this list is the fastest one. Uh, and the reason that is is anything that's slower the computer did something in the background to slow down the timing. So usually the way you use repeat is you repeat a number of times and then find the smallest time in that list and that'll be the most accurate time of what you're actually measuring. 